we're talking about pigs and we're going to tune this whoop i'm telling you it's super simple we can do this don't get no better than this Call them whatever you want. Uh, just understand that there, I mean, there's tons of articles and tons of videos out there that really explain what these things do. I've watched a lot of them and still don't understand. What I do understand is that this method locked in my whoop like no other. It was unbelievable. Uh, so if there's one thing I, I would think is kind of important to know is that uh, your P, your proportional, it works on the present error of, of what's going on with your quad. The I, or integral, works on an accumulation of past errors. And finally, your, your D, the derivative, it's basically trying to predict future errors based on the, the current rate of change. And so you'll kind of see that come to light throughout this process. You'll see how those things work together. Now, disclosure. I am running firmware 3.0.1. I highly suggest you go back and reflash that firmware to your B brain. If you don't, results may vary. Uh, I, I can't guarantee that this method will work for you if you're on a different firmware because I know they have updated basically the weighting of, of PIDs and things like that, so things could change. If you do go back and reflash and it resets everything to defaults, so make sure you go through and reset all, all your uh, previous settings. If you, had to dump, if you had to put in CLI commands, make sure you put those in. Make sure you set your fail safe, all that, all that kind of stuff. Make sure it's all back to normal. You're just on a different firmware. PIDs depend on your setup and your environment. So what works on my whoop may not work on your whoop, which is why I'm not going to show you. I'm not going to show you the numbers I put in I'm just going to tell you the process of how to get to it. Whatever you come up with, that's what you come up with. I mean, it's all about you. So I'm on the stock Inductrix frame. I have gold motors, so there's something like 19, over 19,000 kV. I've got the mullet mod, the FX900 TW cam, uh, and two bladed props. So that's what I've got running right now. Seems to be the best setup. It, I absolutely love it. I'll do another video probably talking about the perfect setup and some different setups that may suit you depending on what you're looking for. I've had problems tuning anything lower than this um, so if, you, if you're not running Insanes or Gold Motors I can't guarantee this will work for you uh, but definitely stay tuned for a part two when I do attempt to tune some lower KV motors. Uh, finally uh, I don't know if this is a a sure thing or not, but it, it can't hurt. Uh, go ahead and, ex and calibrate your accelerometer. You need to make sure that you're on a perfectly level surface uh, and then calibrate it and that could help. Not too sure, but it's, it seemed to help me, so uh, give that a shot. I'll actually I'll post some screenshots of the process so you can go ahead and snap those photos on your phone or on your computer and then you can reference those without help, having to come back here and, and look at my face. So just take a picture of, take a picture of them, go through it with me you know, once or twice, and then you can just use those as reference you know, out there on your own next time. So without further delay, let's go ahead and get into it. So to start out, get into beta flight, and before you do anything else, make sure that you set your rates. Whatever rates you're comfortable with, make sure they are in beta flight. Because like I mentioned, if you flash your firmware, a different firmware, it could, set, it could reset to the default settings, and those rates might not be rates that you're used to. So to avoid, uh, any surprise while you're trying to do a flip or a roll here in a minute with different rates, go ahead and input yours. Just get it out of the way. Do it right now. Go. So now 
uh, what we're going to do is you're going to set the P value for roll and pitch to 40 and then you're going to zero out the I and D for your pitch and roll. Go ahead and leave your your yaw alone. Go ahead and leave your leave that's a hard one. Leave your yaw. Go ahead and leave your yaw. It's not that bad. Go ahead and leave your yaw alone. Uh, if you're on the firmware I'm to, I'm I'm on it, it should be 180 and 45 P and I. Just leave it there. Now what this will do, it'll cause your flight to be super, super sketchy. It's super wonky. It feels like it's on air all the time or on water and just floating around. So uh, before we get into anything else, make sure you take it up for a couple flights, line of sight, uh, get used to what it's going to do. That way you can better control it because you're about to do flips and rolls with it acting like this. Uh, so go ahead and get a feel for that and then we'll, we'll jump into the next step. So the first thing we're going to tune is our P. And what we're going to do is conduct a series of flips and rolls. And what we're looking for is bounce at the end of each flip or roll. Now you shouldn't need to raise the P by any more than a few at a time. At least I didn't have to. Maybe your setup you do. When I started out it was pretty close. When they were set at 40 it was pretty close and it was pretty nice. And what you're looking for is just minimal bounce at the end of, of each maneuver. Don't get too greedy with this. Don't go for, you know, no bounce at all. You're going to have bounce. So just look for minimal bounce compared to when you first started at the, the 40 for each, uh, for the P. Make sure they're really tight bounces and then just move on. Next, we're going to tune our D. Go ahead and set your D value for about 15 on pitch and roll. Now what D is going to do, as we talked about before, is it's predicting future errors based on your current rate of change. So this D is actually going to take out the bounce out of your maneuvers. So set it at 15, take off and, and do a couple flips and rolls, and then adjust it as necessary. You want to keep your D as low as possible. As low as possible. So when they go up by a few at a time and, and continue until all the bounce is gone basically. At least to your eyes, no bounce whatsoever on flips or rolls. So if you start getting upwards of you know, 30, 35, or 40 on D and you still haven't removed the bounce, something may be wrong. Go back and restart, see if you can hash that out that way. And then lastly, we're going to move to the eye. What the eye is going to finally do, it's going to finally take that nasty, wonky, you know, dance floor move and whoop, and it's going to level it out for you. What you're going to do here is set the I value for pitch and roll to 15, say 15 to start. And you're just going to fly line of sight and you're just going to jump. Just jump the quad up and down. You should notice that it will drift in a certain direction. If it does, note what axis that is on, whether it be roll or pitch, and then up the I on the appropriate axis until, until all the drift is gone. Now, it, mine still drifts a little bit, but it's, it's nothing that I can't, I can't control. I can keep it in a, a nice bubble and keep it nice and easy. Now, when you're doing these jumps, you're not going to be controlling with your pitch or your roll at all. Just start out flat on the ground, arm it, and just punch and start jumping. That's when you'll see the drift. Start up in your eye as necessary little by little until that drift is gone. Once your eye is done, that's it. Go for a flight. Now it's best, you, you'll still need to tweak things here and there. One of the first things I look for is on a fresh battery on my first test flight after finishing all this is I do a hard punch out. And I do a couple of those. If I notice I sag in a certain direction, I know that I need to bump my eye up just a little bit. Now it's always a constant game. Your, your pits is always going to be a constant game. You're always going to be wanting to take things to the next level. During these few test flights after all this, and even during, you know, even down the road after all this is done, you're done tuned. <laughs> done tuned. Once you're done tuned up, even down the road, you may start to your eyes may become a little more keen to those bounces that you couldn't see before. 
So if you start to see those bounces, then go back into beta flight and uh, bump up your P and your D a little bit on whichever axis you're seeing that bounce. Now again, you want to keep D as low as possible. If it seems like you need to adjust, then I start with P, bump that up, bump that up maybe two or three, and then only one or two on the D. Now if you really want to go for some next level stuff here, go ahead and record your flight footage put it onto your computer and watch it in slow-mo. Then you'll really see some bounces that your eye couldn't see before. Only do this if you're really good with tuning, tuning PIDs, or if you've had this tuned for a while and you're starting to, starting to become a little more in tune with how to tune. But when you're first starting out, don't be greedy. If it looks good to you, if it looks good in the flight footage, and if it feels good on the sticks, then just leave it. You could just mess it all up and have to start from square one. So if it looks good, if it feels good, keep it. But as always, continue to monitor the performance throughout the life of the whoop until you get a new one, until you change a component. Something as little as changing the props could be grounds for a, a, a retune. Who knows? So there you have it. I told you it was easy. That's all you have to do. Start with your P, adjust your P until you get just a few bounces, done. Move to the D, up your D until there's no bounce whatsoever, done. Move to your I, up your I until there's no drift, done. That simple. It is that simple, guys. I hope it worked for you. I was super surprised when I did this and it, and it worked out. I finally got that locked in feeling. I hope you get the same off of this. If you have any questions, by all means, throw them in the comments below. If you haven't yet, join the Tiny Whoop group on Facebook. And there's some other ones out there. There's a B-Brain group. There's an Inductrix FPV group. Join one of those. That community is just awesome. And they are more than willing to, at the drop of a dime, help you out with whatever you need. So please, if you have questions, ask. We'll get you, we'll get you tuned up. So again, I hope this helped. If it did, smash that like button. If you haven't yet, crush that subscribe button. I'd really appreciate your support. Share this video everywhere, if, I don't know. And since I got a freshly tuned whoop, it's time to whoop, let's whoop, whoop whoop. You're still here? <laughs> what are you even doing? Go to your whoop. Go.